The Octagon is headed back to Abu Dhabi, and the lightweight title is on the line. This is UFC Breakdown. At UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi, the former champion Charles Oliveira looking to get that belt back. He takes on Islam Makachev for the 155-pound title. The General Saif Saud is here to break it all down in detail and show us the finer points. Say, what a matchup, what a clash of styles between these two. Absolutely. These two guys are the best lightweights in the world right now. There is no doubt about it. Look at their win streaks. 10 wins, 11 wins. These guys are phenomenal. Islam is an unbelievable grappler. He's a protege of Khabib. Comes from that camp. We know how strong he is, how physically he is, how well-rounded he is. Fighting Charles Oliveira, the submission champion of the UFC. More yeah. submissions than anyone else who has now rounded out his game with this beautiful striking attack that's very, very dangerous. These guys are so dangerous. At any point, this fight could be over. Really, really exciting. It's going to be a battle of wills in Abu Dhabi. I can't wait to see who comes out on top. Well, you know, certainly Charles Oliveira is known for his finishing prowess. Islam Makachev's trying to and starting to kind of find some momentum in that department as well. There is plenty of topics to dive in on as we go into fight focus. Where would you like to start? We'll start with Charles Oliveira. Where do you think we should start? I think we've got to look at this forward pressure of Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira does a lot of things well, but all of it stems from his forward pressure. And let's take a look. We're going to use the Dustin Poirier fight. Dustin Poirier, you know, interim champion. Right. Very, very tough out. Let's just look at what Charles Oliveira does to him. I mean, right out the gates, he's backing him up. And when we take a look here, five yeah. seconds in, he's got Dustin already behind this black line. We always say to our students when we're coaching. You never want to have your back to that line, right? And he's put him there right away, and Dustin knows that. And he's trying to set up his weapons, and this is what Oliveira does. He locks him down. He's got Dustin now almost to the fence, so he nails Dustin with this hard right hand. And before you know it, Dustin's against the fence. He shoots a shot. Man, we're 15 seconds in this round. Dustin's already got kicked in the stomach, punched in the face, and he's against the fence, right? And all this stuff exhausts opponents, right? They've got to deal with this pressure all the time, constantly the forward pressure. Beginning of the next round, again, right downhill, right in his face. And before you know it, look at where Dustin is again. Here he is behind that line, instantly. And this is what Oliveira has been doing so beautifully. Here he goes again. He's going to throw that straight right hand. Dustin's like, I'm going to throw this left hook. Okay, I got to get away from this guy. He's going to dip all the way underneath. Beautiful little back take right here. He's going to stick this hook in right here and get this control. Okay? Dustin's been here before, right? He doesn't have the hooks. He doesn't have everything. But watch what Charles Oliveira does here. He's super slick right here. He's going to post. Okay? When he jumps up here on Dustin's wrist, you'll see it right here. He puts all of his weight directly down on that wrist. So Dustin cannot lift up. He cannot post up. Again, these little tricks that the former champion does in all these moments. So Dustin can't lift up. When he does, it's an inevitability. He gets the choke. He makes some, some adjustments. He's very, very good at that. This is his spot. He gets the tap. He gets the win. Charles Oliveira's forward pressure, especially as of late, is something to look out for. He's coming downhill all the time. Yeah, and obviously we'll get into the submissions and the other factors that made that happen, but it starts with the forward pressure. Absolutely. Everything he does starts with that pressure that he puts on people. All right, and he's the all-time submissions leader in the UFC. Correct. The striking has come a long way. He's dropped Michael Chandler and Justin Gaethje. He's starting to drop a lot of these elite guys that he's fighting because of how he's rounded out the game. Absolutely. He realized that people were ready for submissions. He can strike anywhere. We talked about that dominant right side, but let's take a look at some of the other things that he does. It's not just right side. Okay, He'll use all kinds of weapons and all kinds of tools. Here we go again with Chandler. He's coming right downhill. It's a lot for these guys to take in. And you can see right here, here we go. I mean, we're already backed up, right? Before we know it, we're already backed up. We're not controlling the center of the octagon. And that's never what you want as a fighter. Here he goes right here. Boom. Smacks him with a beautiful left hook. Gets that control with that head again. There's that elbow. There's that right hand. Chase, chase, chase. Chandler can only run away so much. The thing about Oliveira, though, and through all this chaos, he never loses his fundamentals. He always keeps his hands where? Hands up. His hands are always up all the time. 
And in this case, it pays big dividends. We always say in boxing, always end the combination with your lead hand because of this exact thing. Sometimes people forget to raise their opposite hand up. They throw a big right hand. They don't have the other hand up. This is exactly what happens to Chandler. We're going we're gonna to take Mark Jackson's line, hand down, man down right here. And you can see this. His hand is down. It's not up there to protect. He gets smacked with that left hook. Sends him reeling right here. Drops him immediately. He jumps to this position, and then here we go again. He's going to get that little plum. He's always looking for that head control all the time. And as Chandler starts to come up, and he makes these reads, in, I mean, within a second, within a half a second, bam, look at this hard knee. There's that elbow again, but this is the one. Look at that right hand, full extension. You know, and, and Chandler's as tough as they come. We've seen him in many wars. That punch right there sends him. He's like, I got to get out of here. Tries to get away, left hook puts him down. Oliveira, dangerous with the left hand as well. Okay, let's take a look at this. This just shows the detail in which Oliveira can attack. Can I use it really yeah. fast? You're a southpaw, right? Yeah, southpaw. All right, give me that southpaw look, okay? It's scouting. Southpaw, orthodox, right. yeah, okay? So, Oliveira's here, okay? He's got to make his reads on what he's got. He's got to watch out for the right hand of Oliveira. He's got to watch out for the left hook, the push kick. But what he's going to do is he's going to step through. And as he steps through, he's going to land the elbow from a southpaw position. Something you just never see. Mm -hmm. A guy switching as he's coming forward, attacking in the middle of the switch, and with an up elbow nonetheless. So it's just watch his feet right here again. His feet, his feet. Watch his read. His read right here. He's looking at him. He's saying, okay, he's in orthodox position. The last thing that he's thinking about I'm going to get up elbowed from Southpaw. And that's exactly what Oliveira is going to do. This shows the diversity in his striking. There it is. He has now switched to Southpaw and hit this up elbow. Teamer was trying to jab him back, but everything has changed. And this is what Oliveira does. He can fight in any position. He hurts him with that elbow. He's reeling back. He's looking. And this goes back. Look at the vision of how he watches him. Again, that forward pressure. He's like coming in towards him thinking, what's the next step? And Teamer's like, man, I got to get out of here. Maybe I should shoot a shot. I don't know what I'm going to do. Natural reaction, right? To kind of put your head down, get out of trouble. Gets hit with that little nasty uppercut. And that's all she wrote for him. Charles Oliveira striking is amazing right now. He can do so many different things in the octagon. He's got so much confidence on the feet. I really look for this to be a big, big key in this fight. He's going to want to keep the fight on the feet, I think. So we're going to have to take a look at where and when he can win these battles All on right. the feet. For Islam Makachev, let's dive into him now as we get going into the striking into grappling. We've seen with wrestlers, especially like Islam Makachev, known for the grappling. He needed to round out his skill set, and he's done so. Islam has a fluidity in his footwork that most wrestlers don't. We all know he's got a ground game, but his ability to strike and his ability to strike into wrestling in particular. And that's why this is important, because he can meet Charles Oliveira in the striking battle and still get those takedowns and not be afraid. So this is Davi Hamos. He is a tank on the ground, ADCC guy, takes people down, submits them all the time. Very, very good. And you watch his fight. Islam is trying to stand up most of the fight. It's very interesting. It's kind of different from all the rest of his fights. And he shows the technical a savvy that he has and the understanding of striking. Again, we go back to the foot battle here. He wants to win the foot battle. He wants to get outside of this leg so that way he can come forward, not be in the A zone and not get hit. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And he's going to do that by throwing this little uppercut right here. He throws that nice uppercut. Now let's look at where the foot is. It's already on the outside. He's got his track. He's going to go this way. He's going to land a hard straight left hand, full extension. I mean, look at this punch. Look where his feet are. I mean, this is textbook striking. This looks like a striker setting up, right, and trying to stay on the feet. And he did that in this fight. So very, very impressive stuff. He can set up punches from anywhere, and he understands the footwork very, very well. Also in position to wrestle, again, which is very important. Okay, and this is that same fight. Man, look at this. You rarely see a wrestler backing up looking for strikes, especially when they get tied up, right? They usually start wrestling, not Islam. He's comfortable here. And like I said in this fight, his goal was to kind of stay on the feet. He gets that plum. Davi's running into him, okay? He keeps that balance, and he's going to deliver a pinpoint knee 
right to his chin, right there, right to the chin. I mean, backing up nonetheless. I mean, that is not easy to do. His back is against the cage. He ran him all the way back, but he kept his balance, delivers this hard knee. He's going to drop him right here. After he drops him, he goes nuts on the GNP. And finally, let's take a look at this. This is a great example of what we're talking about is footwork, okay? Islam is very, very comfortable moving left, moving right, moving forward, moving backward, and he will set up shots. A little bit of feint, give me a little something, a little sugar, throw a little kick out there, right? Now he's gonna throw a little check hook, but when you see this, he's not really trying to engage him, right? And it's weird because you usually see Islam what? Going forward, but here he's kind of playing the lateral game, moving left, moving right, throwing some feints, throwing some stuff. He's comfortable here. He's baiting Gleason in. And Gleason starts to lose his patience a little bit. Watch the, the forward, the feints, a oh, little bit, a little bit more. Oh, let's stop it right here. So he's been moving here this last 10 seconds. Left, right, back, a little forward, but not really. Gleason said, okay, I gotta, I gotta take the fight to this guy. So Gleason starts to come in. Boom, he waits for that. This time, Islam doesn't move anywhere. Gleason had been coming forward. Islam had been moving back. He'd been coming forward. He'd been moving right, moving left. He fainted him. He waited for him. Islam lands a beautiful straight left hand, drops him. But as you can see here, as he lands this punch, we're going to take one quick look here at this hand as it opens up, and he's going to that leg, kind of looking for that knee tap, looking for that takedown. Islam is always looking for the takedown. This time he doesn't need it. Takes a look up, sees Gleason's out. Fights over. Islam striking, unbelievable. Something that Charles Oliver is going to have to respect and pay attention to. He's not just a wrestler, he's ready to throw down. All right, but you mentioned it there. He's always looking for the takedowns, and it's what Islam Makachev is known for his wrestling. Look at the finer points of the takedowns. You'll break it down how he's so good at it. Yeah. Islam is a world champion in Sambo, right? And he's got a plethora of takedowns that he uses from all positions. Also, with the judo background, Sambo's pretty heavy in judo. So we're going to take a look at some of these takedowns that Islam hits here. So here he is against Arman, and I cannot say enough great stuff about Arman after that Gamrot fight. Crazy scrambles. Obviously, one of the better lightweights in the grappling department in the UFC. And we take a look at what Islam does here. He's got this clinch position. It's a 50-50. One underhook here for him, and one underhook here for Islam. But Islam's underhook is very, very low. And if you see his hips here, they're kind of away. So Armand is not very worried about getting taken down here. He understands where the dangers are. He's kind of working through that. But you, you'll see this a couple of times from Islam. He throws these little knees and this little bit of busy work in there just to kind of get the guy thinking about what else he's doing. So he throws this little baby knee in there and you see him check that. And then you're going to see him throw this little baby uppercut to the body. Okay. Now, Hand, hand, okay? Still, underhook, underhook. And this is a low underhook. This is what we call a low underhook, right? Not really a big threat because it's so low. It's not like it's a high jacked up underhook and he's off balance. He's got his balance. He's got his base. Watch this here from Islam. Unbelievable. Islam is going to take that left side underhook and he's going to pull. And at the same time, he's going to hit a beautiful, what we call, this is a Diashi Hirai. I'm a judo guy. So for me seeing this, Unbelievable timing, the way he executes it. And when he lands, he's going to go right into mount, but he's going to trap that arm. And this just shows you that Armand is not ready for this. And you really can't get ready for it. Even when they fall here, his hand is still there. Okay? So, still underneath. Islam uses this to his advantage, and he's going to trap it right here, get right into the mount. I mean, he's going to hit the ankles underneath. This is a terrible position. It happens so fast. Beautiful work. Here he is fighting Tiago Moises. This really, really breaks your confidence when you're trying and doing all the right things in defense and you still end up on your back. And that's what Islam does. He turns these positions into positions for him. And lastly, let's take a look at this. This is that clinch position again. He's got that hand position up top. Same thing we saw with Armand with the little, the little Diashi Hirai, the little foot sweep. So here, he's going to do that same little bit of busy work here. Let's watch this. He's switched his grip now. He's digging what we call a deep overhook. He's going to use this deep overhook. He's got one hand here, too, controlling this arm. 
He's going to use that right here. He's going to throw a nice little baby shot, little baby shot to the body. And what he does is he's getting him to think like, all right, we're just playing this game, right? We're just going to kind of hit each other. Like, I'm not really in danger here. This is kind of a 50-50 position again. It is not with Islam. Islam is going to use this beautiful overhook to throw a Haraya Goshi. This is a hip toss and his hip, and he's going to use that leg to assist. He's got that deep overhook. You see it right there. So he's kind of trapped in. He's going to elevate him all the way up, and he goes for a ride. This is what we, this is an epon in judo, right? Game over right there. Lands in side control. These big throws, they jumble people. You know, when you get tossed in the air and your legs are up and you land like that, it shocks you for a bit. And this is uh, what Islam can do. It's all the little things that Islam does with the throws. He can take people down from any position. So dynamic. You see the sambo, you, you see the judo, you see the wrestling. Such a wide array of takedowns that Oliveira is going to have to be aware of in this fight. Okay, Safe, now let's get back into Charles Oliveira. And now we're getting into what these fighters are known for. Clinch, submissions, scrambles, ground control. We'll start with the clinch with Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira has used this clinch masterfully between striking and wrestling. It's fully integrated in his game. He can transition, hit from here, wrestle from here, pull guard from here. Let's take a look, and we're going to use the Justin Gaethje fight here because Justin Gaethje is known for his clinch, right? He's known for it. Let's stop it right here. He's already got Gaethje backed up, and he's already on this head. Now, let's look at all the different attacks that Oliveira comes up with from this position, okay? So first, we know he's got the knees. He's got that nice tie plumb. Boom, he delivers a hard knee right to the floating ribs. No fun for Gaethje. Gaethje knows he's got to get out of there. So he tries to back up here. He's trying to peel, but let's look at this right here. Oliver is already hunting that guillotine from that little position, just having his head just a little bit down. He's already hunting that. Whether he wants it or whether he wants Gaethje to think about it, it doesn't matter. It has the same effect. Gaethje's trying to get his head up. He's trying to get out, and he's going to try to pull out of this, and Oliver is in back on the punches, breaks off. Now Gaethje's back in space. Here we see him again, knee, knee, grabbing the body, knee, knee. Here, Oliveira switches it up. He shoots the shot. Not even really a great shot, but he likes to come downhill, and he doesn't care what position he ends up in, especially if he's close. He shoots a little double here, doesn't have it. Watch how quickly he goes back to this plum and back to attacking the head here. So he's got the head, and now we have to see what he does here with this, okay? He's got this right here, this grip, but what he's trying to do is isolate this arm. He's trying to isolate the arm of Justin Gaethje. He did just shoot a shot, so maybe he wants the fight on the ground. Gaethje's got to think about that. He isolates the arm, and he goes, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and pull guard right here. Something you do not see, very, very rare. The reason why he's doing this is because, again, he has this arm. There are straight arm bar attacks from there, some other stuff, not something you see very often, but again, when you're fighting Charles Oliveira, everything is dangerous. So you see Gaethje, he's going to pull his head out. Oliveira's like, that's cool, man. Whatever. I'll just stand up. So Oliveira stands up. Again, here we go. Uppercuts. Here comes another knee. Let's just take a look at where this knee lands. Okay, right into the sternum. He hits him right in the sternum with his knee. I mean, this is just not where you want to be. I mean, these knees are hard. So he breaks off. So Gaethje has learned now that every single time I get close to this guy, every single time I get in the clinch, he grabs my head, he pulls my head down, he knees me, he uppercuts me, he tries to guillotine me, he pulls guard. I got to keep my head the hell away from this guy's grasp. And so this exchange here, you can see this play out. Oliveira comes forward, checks that leg kick, checked almost every single one of them. Again, you see he's got that. Got that control point, and Gaethje knows that. That's kind of the trigger, right? He grabs the head. And when you watch this unfold, they throw some punches out the break. Here it is. He has it again at the very, very end, okay? So Gaethje's going to do what? He's going to pull his head back, and as he pulls his head back, he gets hit with a straight right hand right on the button. That clinch work that he does, he's integrated it so well. It's an, he uses it to strike. He uses it to wrestle. He uses it to pull guard. It's going to definitely be a factor in this fight. Now time for what Charles Oliveira is really known for, the submissions, the all-time leader, 
with 16. Let's dive in. You said it, all-time leader. This guy poses a threat to finish a fight at any moment. Let's take a look at some of these submissions. Some of them are truly unique. So let's go back to the Gaethje fight. He's not Gaethje down. And here's where he's just so dangerous, Oliver. He's landing some hard elbows on him. Got a couple hammer fists to the face. None of this is fun for Justin. Watch his transition to the back. As he's crashing down, you can see he has already locked the choke in. We call this hugging the shoulder. And Charles Oliveira does this better than anybody. He already locks in the choking hand as he's pulling Justin Gaethje back. Look at Justin Gaethje's face. I mean, his face says it all right here. He is not having fun. He's already getting choked, right? Even though the hands aren't connected. And he's also looking for this right here. He's looking to lock his legs into that body triangle, trapping him. And he does all this in the transition of taking his back. He doesn't take his back and then get the body triangle and then get the choke. He does it all at the same time. So you're attacking multiple things. And here's where he's so good. He locks that up. Now he's going to readjust it. We're going to talk about this. The defense to a rear naked choke is two on one. You take two hands. You attack one of the hands. You try to pull it down and try to kill the leverage here. So Justin Gaethje being the tough guy that he is, you see him reach up and he's going to attack the hands. What Charles Oliveira does is he takes his head away, creates more space, and hides his hand again. Puts his head back on the hand, not allowing Justin Gaethje to be able to defend. The fight's going to end right here. You're going to see him pop his head back out and then back in. Gaethje's trying to reach for it, but you've got seven seconds there. You're going to sleep. So, And here's an example of showing what he will attack in any position from anywhere. He's... Standing up here, he's on the ground and pound. He's in good position. Oliveira's on top here. He's landing some punches. But Oliveira is an opportunist. And he sees this heel right here, and he goes, you know what? I think I'm going to drop down for that. And again, usually, you don't see that. Stay on top. Win the top position. Win on top. But Oliveira, he's so good at finishing submissions that he just goes for it whenever he feels like it. So here he's going to drop down for this, and he's going to look for this. Okay, Tons of credit to Wisely. He is going to fight this tooth and nail. And if you watch this, he keeps trying to fight the hands and sit through. Oliveira just, he sits through again. He's attacking the hands. And this is the correct defense. One more time, roll through, attack the hands. Now let's slow this down. So we were kind of like an in-between zone here, like a knee bar type of situation, but he's past that. He doesn't have the leverage. He's got his foot. And here is the genius of Dubronx. He's like, hmm, what can I do here? And he is about to pull off the first ever calf slicer in the history of the UFC. This is such a hard submission to get. And the way he does this is just seamless. So he's going to push his leg right here off. He's going to trap and figure four this calf right here. Okay. He is going to pull wisely on top of him right here. Okay, and we call this like, it's, it's, it's almost like a seat belt, okay, but he doesn't have an over-under, right? He's got this locked up. Look at this right here. He's got his leg. Look at his quad. I mean, his quad is just getting destroyed right there. The pressure is way too much. That crank is so strong right here. Let's look at where it is fully extended at the very end right there. I mean, just crushing that thing. Look at that. Killing. Look at the pain in this guy's face. This is so hard to pull off. It deserves so much praise. Unbelievable Charles Oliveira with a calf slicer. First one ever. Here he is fighting Efrain Escudero, a very tough guy. Efrain jumps in on the single, and here's where Oliveira is just different. The guy is just built. You know they say built different? Yeah. He is freaking built different. And when you look at this, Oliveira has trapped this arm right here, okay? And he doesn't have a hook, though. He doesn't have a hook. He only has a hook on the other side. And he's so strong here. He has so much dexterity and so much force that he can clamp down on Ephraim. And he has his other leg, but it's not connected here. And again, we talked about what? Moving the head right here. He's going to do that beautifully. He's going to move his head. He's going to sink that choke in nice and tight. Ephraim can't do the two-on-one here. He's forced to tap. There's nothing he can do. Charles Oliver, most submissions in UFC history, as good as it gets. All right, let's keep on moving here and right into the scrambles of Islam Makacha. Both these guys certainly know their way around the mats in terms of 
reversing position and going back and forth. Islam Makachev has made much use of that in his victories in the UFC. It's hard to find Islam in bad positions because he doesn't stay in them. The guy wins almost every single scramble. And let's take a look at some of these crazy positions that he comes out on top in. He never settles for the bottom, and that's kind of the key. Here again, we, we spoke about how great Armand is, how good of a wrestler he is. Armand shoots in on him. Islam gives him one hip, right? Sprawls gives him one hip, starts to stuff the head right here. He starts all the right things as far as defense go. And we, but we know how Armand can scramble, and we're about to see it. So Armand is like, all right, he's got this lock right here. He realizes this is a losing battle, okay? So here goes the scramble. He's pushing down the head. He goes for the crucifix, bam. Islam doesn't stay on stuff. He was on that crucifix. He knew it wasn't there. He bailed on it immediately, okay? Now, again, he's back to the spot he was in before. Let's take a look at this. Framing the head as he's coming up, and he throws a really, really hard knee right here, if you can see it. He's got the head framed out. He keeps control. There's the hand. Then he puts head position right here. Armand here trying to get a breath, trying to take a break, and he realizes Islam ain't waiting. Islam level changes here. He's going to connect his hands and step through. He gets this takedown to make matters worse. These guys love to attack the leg lace. Okay, Khabib did it, and he does it as well. He's going to get this leg lace right here. He's going to attack this leg lace, lace it up, and this, is, this, is the, this tells the whole story. Man, this guy went from offense to, to not only getting – Taken down, need, but now he's got his legs trapped. And this is what he does. He breaks people with these scrambles. So let's take a look here. Here's, this is him fighting Wade. Again, let's, let's remember the Gleason T-Bow fight, okay? Where Islam steps through, he waits and baits, and he steps through with that straight left hand, and he does that here as well. Again, Oliveira's going to have to be aware of that. He's not afraid to throw, and he's got some pop. So he hits Wade right here with a hard straight left, okay? And he goes, we saw him with that, do that with Gleason. What? He's in on that leg, right? Except for this time, he needs the takedown. So he goes through the takedown. But in the process of doing that, his head kind of pops up. And Wade, he's got a guillotine here. And this is one of the few times that you see Islam in real trouble. But that's all the more reason why this is impressive, that in that moment that we see Islam in trouble, he does the correct, right thing. He pops up on his toes here, right? And he's going to neat, he's going to slice through this little half guard and he's going to create a crazy scramble. But Wade, to his credit, holds on to this. Okay? He holds on to this choke and he still got it. And you, you can finish here and you can see him turn and adjust. I mean, he's not in a bad position. Islam stays calm here, though. He's on his back, but he's moving his legs, and this is what we need to look at. I want to take a close look at this. Okay, watch what he does with his legs here. He's on his back. He's, got a, he's in a bad position, but he's going to load his legs here in a moment, and we're going to look at it. There's the load. He brings his legs closer to him to get a little bit of hit power, and he's going to plant his toes in the ground and just gets a nice little explosion up, and this is the key scramble in this fight, right? He comes on top. He would go on to win, and it was, it's these moments that Islam wins that make him what he is. Islam can wrestle in any position, and he can scramble in any position, and this is going to be huge in this fight. If he can outscramble Oliveira when Oliveira tries for these positions and submissions and end up on top and wear him out, it, it might be a long night for Oliveira. His mentor is Habib Nurmagomedov, known for getting guys to the ground and keeping them there. Islam Makachev has the similar skill set. So strong and so technical. When Islam gets people down, they usually don't get up. And let's take a look at what he does here. Okay. So many little details here by Islam that he understands. So this is a position that he likes here. He likes this little half guard position. And what he does is he scoops the head. He gets head control. He's got this little, we call this a little fishtail, right? He's balancing his hips in a, a different way, facing this way, but this is like a little balance, like a little tail, right? He can keep his balance. If Bobby Green explodes in him, he can use this foot, and base it, you know, put his toes in the mat and keep his balance. So let's watch what he does here. So he likes this spot. He starts punching him. He starts attacking him. Again, he's got that head around, the arm around the head, and there's that little hip bump that we knew could come from Bobby Green. Now, let's, let's pause it right here. This is what he was waiting for, okay? Now, he's attacking Bobby Green with the Kimura. 
He's already got the grip. He's on him. He's ready. Bobby Green's got to deal with this, right? We have to attack what's attacking us. We can't just act like it's not happening. So Bobby Green has to try to bail out of this situation. So he does. He starts to shrimp back, okay? And if you look at this position here, Bobby is trying to get him away from him, right? Get him away to take pressure off of that lock. And he does, right? I mean, he's, from where he was, he's kind of getting out of there. But that's not what Islam cared about, right? He just uses that as a pass. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to step right through and pass. And now he's in the mount, okay? So it keeps you on the horns of a dilemma. You go left, he goes right. You go right, he goes left. It doesn't matter. He gets his ground control. He starts to ground and pound. Obviously not where you want to be, but let's watch what he does here. Let's watch his legs. He's already setting the hook up, okay? And the reason why this is so important is as Bobby flips over, there it is. Bobby Green, his hips are not even on the ground, okay? They are on top of Islam's calves and his ankles. He can't, you can't move your hips when they're not on the floor. So this is how he traps people. He's got total control here. He's going to ground and pound here and get the finish. Here we go back to the Tiago Moises fight. Um, again, Moises is a very good grappler. Tiago Moises here is thinking, all right, like, he doesn't have any hooks, okay? There's no hooks here. You look, here's one foot, here's the other foot. But this foot is going to do the magic, okay? Just got that little grapevine on that foot, no big deal. And we start looking at where Islam's posture is and where his head is. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. So he's hitting him, and Tiago's telling himself, all right, as long as... I don't give up the hook. I should be fine here, right? I mean, how's he going to get me? Here we go. He straightens this leg out again. He's controlling this leg. He's not allowing him to get base and weight under that leg. And the reason he does this is so he can't get up. He can't base out. And then when we get a closer look and we see that his knee is on the ground. This leg is grapevined out and controlled. Islam, all of his weight is directly over Tiago. So Tiago has no base. He can't get up. He can't posture up, okay? All of his weight's here. This leg he can't base off of, and this is what Islam does to people. Even with no hooks, he can completely control the situation. He's going to control Tiago. He's going to hit him with some shots. He extends that leg with that grapevine. He's going to extend it again, and oh, here we go. He starts attacking the choke. The interesting part is he lets go of this. He doesn't have it right now, okay? So no hooks, zero hooks. Again, if you're a guy on the bottom, you're Tiago, a great fighter, you're like, all right, no hooks. All I got to do is wait, wait, wait my time out, focus here, I can stand up, I can explode. He's never going to get that chance. So as he's fighting hands here, Islam sinks that choke in, and you can see him sinking it in. And at the same time, he puts this foot back, and he's going to use this as counter pressure. So that way he cannot stand up, he cannot base out, he attacks the neck here, gets the choke, uses that as counter pressure. He cannot base up. He cannot get out. And that's all she wrote from a position that you usually do not see guys get finished. And here he is against K. John Johnson. And K. John Johnson trying to do the right thing here in a bad position. We'll take a look at this and what he does and how he does it. And this is just an example of how Islam just big brothers everybody, okay? And I mean, you see it over and over again. So he remounted. He's going to try to push him off, okay? And we're going to start there. So as he tries to push him off, Islam goes, you're going to try to push me off? I'm going to grab your wrist and hold you down like a little kid, okay? He, this, he big brothers him bad here. He stretches him out, takes that wrist, puts it there, and holds him there, okay? So now he can't hit bump. He keeps control of that wrist, while figuring out what he wants to do, and I'm going to hit you a couple times here as I adjust my, my mount. And there's one hard shot while still pinning that wrist. Then he brings the wrist in, okay? Now the wrist is right here. Now you got Americanas. you got a bunch of different stuff in here. Not easy to do in this position. So Islam is just deciding, hmm, what do I want to do here? But he's got total control. He's in total control here. So he attacks that wrist. That's the right defense. Throw your legs up. Now let's freeze this right here. <laughs> you never, ever like to see your guy go from the mount where he's dominating to a spin off the top arm bar right on his back because the probability of finishing that 
isn't maybe as high as being on top and just elbowing, right? So, but Islam is so confident right here. He's just having fun. He's going to attack this risk. He's going to spin off here for the arm bar. As he spins off for the arm bar, oh, let me just hook the leg and get the angle. Perfect jujitsu. So he hooks the leg, he gets the angle. And K. John is doing the right thing here. He is getting a rear naked choke kind of defense where you connect your hands, right, to try to protect the hand that's getting arm barred, the arm that's getting arm barred. So let's pay attention to this. He's isolated this right here. This is the arm bar. This is the defense. This is the defensive arm. And let's see what he does here. So Islam realizes what's going on, and he's going to let go of the arm he's attacking, and now he is going to attack the arm that is defending right here. Okay? He figure fours that. He's going to break his grip right here. He's going to readjust now, and watch what he does. He's going to sit up, and now he's back on the original arm that he's arm barring after he's broken the lock from the defense from Johnson. That's all she wrote. Extends the arm. I mean, this is such high-level grappling. This guy can finish from any position, and he's going to be a lot to deal with on the ground as well for Charles Oliveira. Safe. We'll wrap it up on each of these fighters with the X factor, the intangibles, if you will. We'll start with Charles Oliveira. What's the X factor? The X factor here with Charles Oliveira is, is his ability to get submissions, but particularly against wrestlers in situations where people are trying to take him down or off his back, which I think is a huge, huge factor in this fight, as we know the fight is going to hit the mat at some point. So here we go. This is Kevin Lee's fight with Charles Oliveira. Let's back this up just a little bit. Okay. Kevin Lee took Charles down the round before this and had some success on top, okay? And so he's going back to his bread and butter. He's a college wrestler. Let me get in on this leg. Let me get a single. Charles Oliveira, no problem. You want to grab my leg? There's that front kick we love. Look at this guy guiding the neck. I mean, he's guiding the neck. There are the hands. Let's look at it again. He's guiding the neck already right when he grabs the leg. I mean, instantaneously, right when he makes contact, right? He's going to lock up this guillotine. And this is just, if this happens... There's no getting out of it. You're not always going to be able to knee slice through or fight your way through. I'm sorry, but Charles Oliveira is not weight, right? I mean, if he locks that neck up, and this is what makes this fight so interesting. So he's going to lock this neck up from this weird position. And you can see, I mean, he has got that thing cranked. He's already starting to lift this elbow up. He's got tons of leverage right here. Okay, when we look at this, he's got tons of leverage. He's getting that elbow high. This choke is in very, very deep. But he has no guard here. And Kevin Lee knows, all right, I cannot let him trap me, get guard or even get half guard. So Kevin Lee's like, all right, I, I can deal with this, right? Charles Oliveira just falls to his back. Right when he gets the neck, he just falls to his back. And you see the grip again right here. You can't even see his head. That's how deep the choke is. And that's it. I mean, that's a wrap. He can snatch that neck so quick. He's going to get some leverage here, right here. Just out of half guard, which is not a lot of leverage. But when you're as long as Charles Oliveira, he's got 74-inch reach, he's got very long legs, you can get that kind of torque and leverage with that body. And that's exactly what he does. Kevin Lee probably thought he could maybe jump out or, or get out of there. He can't. And that's the end of the fight. Quick tap. And, and the fight is over. And let's go back to this and tie it into Oliveira's forward pressure. This is an example of how he forces people to shoot bad shots. Here's against Clay. Coming forward, coming downhill. We know how he likes to fight. We're going to see some of the stuff that he does. There's that right hand. There's that tie plumb. There's the knee. And after he throws that knee and he gets Clay against the fence, look at this hard right hand too. Hard right hand right here. Clay's like, man, I got to get out of here, right? He's all the way backed up against the cage. Nothing's good going to happen. So he shoots a shot. That was the wrong move because if you shoot a bad shot on Charles Oliveira, he's going to lock up the neck. He has really long legs. So if you try to double him, and you don't hit it right, he can plant that foot in the ground. That's exactly what he does. He tightens this choke up here, and that's it. He's going to pull guard here. He's going to lock it up. And, I mean, this is all she wrote. He's ready to tap right when he hits the mat. It was that bad shot that he forced, and that's the end. Charles Oliveira locks that up, and that's it. Now, let's look at this. This is Darren Elkins, who's a really, really tough guy. This is when Oliveira was at 45. Darren Elkins, a college wrestler, 
is going to is going to get that double leg. He's going to we've seen Oliveira on his back against Chandler. We've seen him on his back against a lot of people. We know he can get taken down, but what does he do when he gets on his back? That's the scary thing and this is exactly what he's going to do here. So here's a beautiful little double flare. Bang. Okay. You look at this. Elkins got him down. He's not in the guillotine, not fully. He's fine here, right? He's going to do his thing. He's going to get to work. He's going to he's going to try to secure the round. Watch how fast Charles Oliveira gets the guard. He's already back to guard position. Now, from the guard position, in a blink of an eye, he's going to start attacking. He's already got the leg over the shoulder, okay? So this just went from bad to worse, but it's going to get even worse for Darren Elkins. Now, he's going to pull down the head. He's going to lock up the triangle. He's trying to control posture here, and now he has to control the wrist. So... Right here, he's got his legs locked, he's got wrist control. And all that happened within two seconds of him ending the mat. Now he's gonna turn his body, lock that, that, that triangle, attack that arm right here. Now he's attacking the arm. So now he's got Elkins on the heels of another dilemma, triangle arm bar, okay? Elkins is a tough guy, Charles knows that. So he starts hitting with elbows. Elkins still in there, still in there, still locked up. But he, he's not tapping. Still fighting. Now he's on his back. And you're going to see this switch of the legs right here that's just, it's just so good. It's so good. He doesn't have the triangle 100%, so he's just going to switch his legs right here. He's going to get that arm bar. I mean, you see how tight that is. And that's all she wrote. He can attack from his back. He can attack the neck. He can attack at all times. Charles Oliveira is a threat in all these exchanges that we're probably gonna see in this fight. And it's gonna be very interesting to see if he can catch Islam in these positions. Final bullet point, X factor on the side of Islam Makachev. What is it there? Well, I Islam's, you know, we know the camp he come from. He's a protege of Khabib. We know these guys believe in their wrestling so much. And, and you know, what, what has he seen? He's seen Khabib go 29 and 0. And, and he hasn't lost really himself, except for one time he got caught. And MMA fans and community know that can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. So this guy is so confident in his wrestling, so confident in his strength. And this is the one thing that I think that we're not talking about. How strong is Islam? You can have a plan, but when you lock up with somebody and they're stronger than you, and just like that Cajon fight, and you hold that wrist down and you can't do anything. And we've seen Oliveira get controlled before. If Islam can control Oliveira like that, wear him out and be that physically strong, stick to that game plan from that camp, father's plan that we mm -hmm. talk about with Khabib, right? Take him down, control him. It, it could be a long night. And here he is against Dan Hooker. Say what you want about Dan Hooker's never been submitted. I know this fight was short notice. He came in, he showed a lot of bravery, but he's never been submitted. He's not a slouch on the ground. I mean, I know he's a striker, but he's not a guy that just gets taken down and gets submitted. So this is right out the gate. We see Islam, okay? Not afraid. And let's look at what he does here again. We tie this back in. Striking to grappling, right? He's going to pop him here. He's going to hit him. Islam's never scared to land, okay? He's never scared to land. So he's going to throw that punch and go right to the double. Now he's got the double. He's going to take him over to the fence. And now here's where stuff gets real, real interesting. I think we've all seen this video. Here's the guy right here. Here's Khabib, okay? And Khabib is going to walk him through this whole thing, right? And we see this position that he likes. Okay, Khabib's talking to him here, but Islam hits that little half guard. There it is. There's that fishtail that we talked about that he likes right here. He's in that position right now where he's got that balance, and he's going to start attacking the head and start attacking the Kimura. And this is exactly what he's about to do. So Dan knows that, and Dan gets an underhook, and we're going to talk about that. So in this position right here, the underhook is what you want, Okay. Here it is. Dan's got the underhook, okay? Again, we know this is what he uses here to isolate this arm. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to isolate this arm on Dan Hooker. He gets the arm isolated. Right when he gets it isolated, he grabs the wrist. Right here, he's got wrist control. And Dan's got to be aware of that, okay? So still, you're real far away from what's about to happen, but it just shows you the physicality of Islam. And I really think this is a make or break moment here in this fight uh, for Charles Oliveira. How strong is Islam? It appears he is very strong. So he locks it up here. He passes the side control, okay? 
Now he's inside control. Dan Hooker understands, all right, here in this space, he can Kimura him. But if I put myself against the fence, there's no space for the Kimura. So sometimes when someone gets a Kimura against a cage and you're this close to it, you're like, well, how are they going to get my arm behind me? So it's kind of a safety thing. And Dan is about to do that. Watch him. He's going to try to move back to the fence. And when he does that, Islam's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to bring you back over away from the cage right here. So here we are now. Obviously, this is not a fun position, okay? But he's only got one arm. He does not have his hands connected. And Islam's still a little bit young. And he had a little moment here where he was like, man, I don't know. And there was Khabib. There's a video of it. Khabib talking him through it, telling him exactly what to do. And that's exactly what he does. He's going to isolate. Dan is trying to fight this. He's got both his hands underneath. He's trying to fight. He understands what's going on. But here's when Khabib tells him, you need to step over the head. And there it is. Once he steps over the head right here, okay, he's got this leverage point. He's got the grip. He squeezes down on his head. And this is what you do. You've got this right here, and you squeeze down on the head with a hamstring to try to separate it even further away from the lock. And once this happens, that's all she wrote. He's going to take this thing way up there. He's looking at the ref. Nothing Dan Hooker can do. The physical strength of Islam and the wrestling prowess, that camp, the confidence to have Khabib in your corner, it's going to be really, really interesting to see battle of wills between these two guys. And that fight against Dan Hooker was in Abu Dhabi. Now, the octagon is the octagon, whether it's here at the Apex or in any big arena or stadium in the world. But it's a home game for Islam. It's, it's a great point. Look. The pandemic, all this stuff, you know, we know Fight Island, it all happened. But when you look at Abu Dhabi, you look at the history of Khabib winning there against Dustin, jumping in Dana's hands, and you just, it's kind of their home base, right? We don't go to Dagestan. We, we've been to Russia once, but Abu Dhabi's kind of become this place for them. So it's definitely like a home, home game for them. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of keys here, but really this is going to be a battle of wills between two of the best lightweights in the world on phenomenal win streaks. Very, very rare that we see this. We're really lucky to see it. I can't wait to see fight night. All right, we're going to wrap this up with the keys to victory for each of these guys. We'll start with Charles Oliveira. What are they? Well, we talked about it, right? Set the pace with the pressure. Charles Oliveira, a freight train coming downhill. He doesn't care where the fight ends up. He doesn't care if he's on his back. He doesn't care if he's in the clinch. He does all this using his diverse striking. The guy's comfortable now, right? He's got a laser right hand, awesome knees, awesome elbows. We saw the left hook. He can do it all on the feet. He's not worried about it. And lastly, he's got to dictate where the fight takes place. Look, we know where Islam's strengths are. If Islam can get him down and pass his guard and keep him inside control and keep him in these positions and wear him out, it's going to be a long night for the former champion, Du Bronx. And he cannot allow that to happen. He's got to use all the weapons that he has to make sure he dictates where the fight takes place. All right, let's slide over to the next slide. Islam Akacha, keys to victory there. So let's take a look at Islam. Conversely, he needs to stop the advance, right? We know Charles Oliveira loves to come downhill. He's got to put him on his back foot. He's got to make him think, okay, what is he doing? Is he going to take me down? Is he going to punch? We know that he can execute takedowns and win scrambles. So even if he gets in trouble, he gets in a guillotine, he gets in a submission, he can keep going and work all the way through that until he ends up on top in that dominant position where he will maintain ground control win the rounds. I, I mean, I think I saw him say first round warm up, second round, drag him deep waters, third mm-hmm. round finish. The guy's saying what he, what he wants to do. And, and these are the keys for him. He's got to execute one slip up though against Du Bronx. That could be it. At UFC 280, at the end of it, the champion will have a name. The question is, will it be Charles Oliveira again, or will Islam Makachev join his mentor, Habib Nurmagomedov, as uh, UFC lightweight champions? For Safe Saud, I'm Brendan Fitzgerald. Thank you for watching UFC Breakdown. UFC 280 goes down from Abu Dhabi.